guys, welcome back to the channel. Dave from Timber Time Outdoors. You guys like to make firewood? There's a good chance you do if you're watching this video. And there's also a good chance that you have a chiropractor on speed dial because the process of making firewood is really hard on the back. So we're gonna talk about that in this video. We're gonna go over some tips, some tricks. We're gonna show you some things with the equipment that I have to uh, try to alleviate some of those problems and reduce your risks. So stay with us. Hey now, take a step outside and seize the day now. All right, you like to make firewood, so do I. Um, it's a difficult process, but that's one of the things I actually like about it, and I'm sure you do too. Um, let's let's talk about this. So you know, I'm going to kind of focus on kind of the three main areas of making firewood. Number one is cutting. You know, so running the chainsaw and uh, some of the problems you can have with your back running that chainsaw. Number two is, um, you know, dealing with the big rounds and, and getting them up on the splitter and kind of that process, that middle process of splitting the wood and everything that goes with that. There's a lot of lifting, a lot of bending over. And the third thing is, you know, kind of that stacking, the material handling, you know, getting those that finished product into a position where it can dry out. So kind of focused on those three areas. And we'll also take a look at two, two problems. Number one is repetitive motion, right? So repetitive motion can cause trouble with the back. And then the obvious one we'll talk about is, is strain, you know, lifting and, uh, and, you know, that kind of that sharp pain that can happen. All right, so let's, let's get into it here. Okay, that first part of the process is one of the funnest. Um, you guys have seen me with my, uh, my two saws. I have a steel MS. Uh, 261C, which I hardly ever use now because I have an MS 500i, which I absolutely love. Lots of videos on that. Um, I have a 20 inch bar on there and some of you have made comments that that's too short, you need a longer bar so you can reach so you're not hurting your back. You guys are totally right about that. You know, having a longer bar um, will certainly help. But I gotta tell you, I love my 20 inch bar. Um, it's easier to sharpen and it's fast. I, I'm probably not gonna get a 25 inch bar. I'd like to do some other things that can save my back. But basically, um, you know, when you're running that saw and you jump up on a pile, you're bent over a lot. You're down in the, you know, way bent over and you, you just, that um, repetitive over and over cutting, cutting, cutting can really take its toll on your back. And so um, what I've done here is I've purchased this tractor to try to alleviate some of that. Basically the tractor and the grapple, I'm gonna be lifting my logs up at waist high. And that's kind of the key note here. The key takeaway is try to do as much of this process at waist high as you can so that you're not bent over. Seems simple, right? But you know, <laughs> gravity takes its toll here and wants that wood to be down on the ground. And so you're constantly trying to get it up. So tool number one here is the tractor uh, and the grapple and that's um, what I'm doing now is using that to hold the logs up high and, and cut them off and so from a cutting perspective the tractor is really the key tool for me. Okay the middle part of the process is also fun um, that's where you're basically getting the rounds you know up on the splitter and getting that um, material you know sized up and ready to be stacked. So that middle process of stacking can be absolutely brutal on your back. Both, um, you know, trying to lift rounds up onto the splitter and then just constantly handling that material, that repetitive motion of twisting and whatnot. So, um, you know, I purchased a new splitter a year ago. It's a Wolf Ridge, I really love it. One of the key things about that Wolf Ridge was the log lift. Um, you know, some of these rounds that I get are pretty darn big. They're oak. They're super heavy. Um, and even the smaller stuff, you know, I, uh, I'll use the tractor to, you know, bring that material over and just put it up on the log lift. And I try to minimize the, the amount of weight that I'm lifting and strain that I've got on my back. You know, there's some techniques you can use about, you know, bending your knees and, and so forth, trying to keep your back straight. All good. But basically, uh, the log lift, I would say, is kind of the key... Um, you know tool that you can use to reduce lifting and then of course again the tractor here helps quite a bit with um, grabbing material with the claw or if you've got some big rounds one at a time you can put them up on the splitter um, yeah so use tools as best you can oh there's one other one i don't have that some people have mentioned to me is a picaroon 
you know it's kind of one of those it's like a little pick and you reach down and grab it I don't have one of those uh, make some comments guys if you guys think the picaroon is something that I should buy I'm gonna go get one uh, just seems kind of like a hassle right but maybe not uh, again I want to I'm in this for the long haul so it's not all about speed um, I want to make sure that I'm safe about things so so that's the middle process let's talk about the last uh, uh, portion of this thing all right now you've got the material up on the splitter you've got it all split now you got to deal with it you got to you got to put it someplace you got to get it to dry out so a couple things there right if you have a conveyor a conveyor is probably the best tool you can have because it just takes the material and puts it in a pile and you don't have to touch it no strand on your back whatsoever you just kind of shove it down the splitter and away it goes um, I don't have a, a conveyor yet I don't know if I'll ever get one my yards kind of small here but uh, would be nice to have I know Wolf Ridge makes a nice small one that I got my eye on we'll see um, but anyway conveyor probably number one tool I don't have that so what I've been doing is um, I've been using just a wheelbarrow and so when the material comes off the splitter it goes into the wheelbarrow and what I used to do is I take that wheelbarrow over to where I stack it and I dump it down on the ground and then I'd pick it up um, I do have a video here I'll link that uh, shows me stacking a full cord of wood um, all that materials down on the ground and I was at the chiropractor the next day so I don't do that anymore and now I keep it in the wheelbarrow and I stack it per load so I get a wheelbarrow full I stack it and uh, it just keeps me from bending over you know it doesn't eliminate it hundred um, percent but it does definitely uh, save in that regard um, sometimes in my process I just go right from the splitter into my trailer and off it gets sold some people don't care how dry the wood is they just want well, you know, want a better deal and so I do it that way too I'll split it go right into my trailer you know I got this old trailer here um, things like 27 years old fixed it a million times it gets the job done you know it uh, it's very ergonomic it's just at that right height you know I think these sides are 16 inches high um, I don't have to bend over super far I stack all my wood for my uh, customers and it's just very easy for me to reach in stack it or you know load it up that way too so um, you know as I get higher volume maybe the tractor um, helps out with some of that but that's what I do for a stacking perspective um, you know loading is uh, also you know if you're hand chucking the wood that's another thing that can hurt your back as you kind of bend over and throw in that repetitive motion um, I know some of you use the RBC totes uh, make a comment on that guys I don't know that seems like a pain in the neck to me to use RBC tote load it unload it maybe they work um, I have no plan to do that but I'd be curious to know what you guys think of the RBC uh, totes so uh, all right well that's that's the three things that I do um, to save save my back all right we'll bring this one to a close a um, couple things I'll point out here if you're a young guy you're probably not having any trouble right um, lifting wood and bending over over and over is no big deal on a young guy's body if you're a little older or if you're in this for the long haul eventually making firewood is going to beat you up so good tools good techniques you're in this for the long haul it's not all about speed let's be safe and uh, and use good uh, ergonomics to make sure that we can continue to make firewood because it is really fun all right um, if you learned something or if you like the video please hit that like button it really helps also make a comment you know I've only mentioned a few things here if you've got something that is very helpful in regards to ergonomics and making firewood put it in the comments I want to read it and I'm sure others do too um, okay so uh, uh, hit that like button share with your friends subscribe if you like this kind of content and remember everybody keep it in the timber bye bye